In July 1997, two Argentinian scientists flying over Snow Hill Island in Antarctica spotted a hitherto unknown colony of emperor penguins. Seven years later, in 2004, Quark expeditions made the first land visit to Snow Hill aboard the renowned Russian icebreaker, the Captain Klebnikov. In 2018, after a hiatus of eight years, Quark and the Captain Klebnikov have returned to Snow Hill Island. This is the story of a journey to that remote and magical destination aboard this famous icebreaker. The Kapitan Klebnikov, under new ownership, has traveled more than 13,000 nautical miles to reach this spot from her home port in Vladivostok. Our point of departure is Ushuaia, billed as the most southerly city in the world. The departure of this legendary ship for this unique destination is an exciting moment brimming over with anticipation. We head down the Beagle Channel, named after Charles Darwin's ship that sailed to the Galapagos in 1831. Under the glow of a lingering sunset, the pilot vessel pulls alongside. The Argentinian pilot departs, cautiously descending the rope ladder slung over the side of the ship. As the pilot boat fades into the gloaming, the Kapitan Klebnikov heads for the 600 mile crossing of Drake Passage, through which the turbulent ocean streams at six times the rate of the Gulf Stream. The Antarctic Convergence passes through the center at around 60 degrees south latitude. Once crossed, the water temperature drops abruptly and ice flows begin to appear. We are heading for the land of ice, Antarctica, the world's fifth largest continent. Its size aptly illustrated by this overlay of the USA. Pale sunlight slides gently across the carpeted bridge, reflecting the motion of the ship. Icebreakers with their lack of stabilizers and rounded hull are renowned for their rolling motion. Today the drake is not rough and we roll only 20 degrees either side of center. But the Klebnikov has rolled as much as 49 degrees on other voyages. Approaching Antarctica, the chilly temperatures bring reduced visibility and light snow. We pass within a few miles of historic Elephant Island, concealed from our view by a veil of mist. During the crossing, we are treated to a series of lectures in the ship's auditorium. All of these seabirds in these four families are in an order called the Procelleriformes, which just means stormy ocean, literally, so you get an idea of where they like to spend their time. But bird watchers mostly just call them the tube noses. We learn about the many species of mammals which inhabit these waters. On the second voyage we had in the plus figures, and on the last voyage we had about minus 5 to minus 10, which is similar to what they're calling for this voyage. I just looked at the weather report, they're calling for anywhere between minus 5 to minus 10, uh, plus wind. Okay, so if you've never experienced those kind of temperatures before, 
it's the wind that will make it the coldest. So uh, always prepare for, for uh, Antarctic weather. A snowy sheath bill hitches a ride. When we reach the Weddell Sea, the pack ice becomes a continuous sheet. Only an icebreaker can navigate through these conditions. We are not very far from the spot where Shackleton's ship Endurance was crushed in the pack. Once the ship is locked into drifting sea ice, helicopters fly us to within a mile of the Snow Hill penguin colony, which is estimated to include around 4,000 breeding pairs. The temperature is a chilly minus 8 degrees Celsius. A brisk 20 knot wind threatens to carry away the base camp refuge tent and creates a wind chill of minus 18 centigrade or zero Fahrenheit. Our feet sink into drifts of overnight snow. We are greeted on the ice by a Weddell seal and her pup. As we trek for one mile through soft snow, we are met and bemused by adult emperor penguins who seem equally curious about ourselves. Finally, we arrive at the bustling colony. Emperors breed on fast ice attached to the land, not on the land itself. South polar skewers continually patrol the skies, seeking any sign of weakness, which they will exploit without mercy. Males are larger than females but have a shorter life expectancy. This may be due to the fasting period lasting as long as 134 days 
while they incubate the egg and look after the chick during the winter. If a female does not show up within 10 days of the egg hatching, males will abandon the chick for self-preservation. Sleek plumage provides 80% of the insulation against temperatures as low as minus 40. Incubation lasts as long as 67 days. Emperors are seasonally monogamous, meaning that they stay faithful for one breeding cycle. At the time of our visit in mid-November, the chicks seen here are about 14 weeks old. Both male and female adults travel as far as 500 kilometers when foraging for food, covering between 51 and 903 miles per trip. Over five months, a chick needs 70 to 80 kilograms, or 170 pounds of food. Prolactin can be described as a parental hormone found in many species, including our own. It is especially powerful in emperor penguins because it takes exceptional parental dedication for the males to remain on the job during the long winter and also to return 70 miles with food after being released from their incubation duties. This hormone will be switched off within four to six weeks of the scenes shown here. At that time, the adults will simply depart, leaving their young to their own devices. The line in the snow is a rope marking the limits beyond which we should not stray. It is clear that the penguins just find it intriguing. Hunting dives average five minutes and reach depths of 500 to 800 feet, but the maximum recorded depth is an astonishing 1,850 feet and maximum underwater time 27 minutes. Surviving young will return to the colony at four years old and breed in their fifth year. Normal lifespan is around 20 years, but birds as old as 50 have been recorded. snow and mist at the landing site limit the number of helicopter landings on the fast ice adjacent to the penguin colonies. Sightseeing helicopter flights are arranged in an organized and well choreographed operation.
Immense floating castles of ice are all around. Unlike the wind-driven sea ice, they are propelled by fierce underwater currents and plough inexorably on their way through the pack. The palette of colour from the setting sun washes over the breathtaking vista. After three days locked into the drifting ice, it is time for the Kapitan Klebnikov to extricate herself from its icy grip. We still have much to see. She uses her waterline bubbling system and wash from her triple screws to break free and start her turn. The surrounding pack is fractured and tumbled, an obstacle course for emperors heading for the open water and an example of what Shackleton's men had faced on that trek to Elephant Island. The brown color on the underside of the ice is phytoplankton, providing food for zooplankton, including krill, which are the basis of the food chain in the polar regions. It is estimated that the total weight of all the krill exceeds that of all the humans on the earth. The bridge is open at all times, other than when the pilot is on board. The ice takes many forms. Observing the ship thread her way through this crystal maze is mesmerizing.
more helicopter flight seeing is arranged to enable us to watch the Klebnikov crunch her way through ice stretching to the horizon and beyond. She looks so small and vulnerable in this icy wilderness. It makes us realize how much we depend on her for our very survival. It was just 100 years since Shackleton and his men drifted on pack ice such as this through these very waters. And here we are, barely a lifetime later, traveling in safety and comfort while maintaining intimate contact with the outside world. We unexpectedly encounter open water, allowing us to cruise among the gargantuan icebergs. Large as they seem, seven-eighths of their bulk is hidden beneath the water. Icebergs are formed from falling snow and are therefore fresh water. The sea is beginning to freeze and is skimmed with ice which freezes at minus 1.8 degrees centigrade or lower. We are just one month away from the Austral Mint Summer. Icebergs carved from the ice shells bordering the Weddell Sea stretch across the horizon, threatening the way ahead. In July 2017, a huge iceberg, designated A68, 2,240 square miles in area, broke free from the Larsen ice shelf. Her fate will most likely be to follow the route of previous large icebergs into the South Atlantic. Occasionally we disturb seals and penguins making their way through their icy world. While sailing through this wondrous seascape, preparations get underway for mulled wine and refreshments on the foredeck. They include a special cake.
snow begins to fall just in time for the party. <laughs> Captain Boldikov cuts the cake. <laughs> <laughs> Aboard the ship are 94 passengers from 16 different nationalities, plus 16 Quark expedition staff and 69 ship's crew, making a total of 179. Senior officers joined the crowd. <laughs> this unlikely event finishes with a group photo. We stop for the night wedged in the ice between James Ross Island and Cockburn Island. Just off Erebus and Terra Gulf, it is totally still. The water is mirror calm. The following morning we disembark onto the floating ice and can walk around the hull. Perhaps this would be a good time to provide some details about the Captain Klebnikov. She was built in Finland in 1981, 434 feet long with a beam of 88 feet. An icebreaker bow is spoon-shaped so she rides up on top of the ice. At the forward end of the keel is an ice knife. Amazingly the special polymeric coating on the hull appears untouched. She is the only ship to have circumnavigated Antarctica twice and has made 18 transits of the Northwest Passage. A small iceberg is locked into the ice within walking distance, although walking is not easy for the snow is soft and gives way underfoot. More snow begins to fall as we prepare for another group photo. The next event is the polar plunge for those brave or crazy enough to participate. The water temperature is one degree below freezing. Alex! 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 <laughs> 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 The sea continues to freeze as the zodiacs are moved from the forward deck to the aft 
to prepare for the return crossing of the Drake Passage. We now head through the Antarctic Sound, also known as Iceberg Alley. We encounter more wildlife, including this seal which disappears beneath the bow, but which, to everyone's relief, resurfaces unhurt behind the ship. This is Rosamel Island, which I visited in 2005. At that time I was not aboard an icebreaker, so this was as far as we could go. We finally leave the ice behind and are accompanied by birds as we head north across the Drake Passage. Lectures continue with a briefing on detailed evidence of global warming. Bob Headland from the Scott Polar Institute in Cambridge, UK, conducts an auction for various items. I have 350 from the lounge, I'm waving the gavel, I'm waving round once. Four, I'm likely to change. Four, four, four hundred, four hundred, four hundred, four hundred, four hundred. Captain Boldakov gives his farewell speech, accompanied by his senior officers. I see good weather. All around people on the board, no rolling and teaching. Tomorrow you will fly home. But our crew reach our home only in December 29. <laughs> but anyway, I hope meet you again in the nearest future. I, I won't say to you goodbye and good luck. Under the light of a full moon, we enter the port of Ushuaia at 1.40 a.m. on the morning of November the 24th, 2018. The Capitan Klebnikov arrived at her home port of Vladivostok at 17.46 on the late afternoon of December the 31st.